So in today's presentation, we will be talking about Cape PAC. Cape PAC has been developed by ESCO for over 30 years with more than 30,000 global users. All these users have one thing in common. They're able to save on average 10% of their packaging, palletization, storage, and shipment cost. So with KPAC, it's all about getting the right size for your shipping uh, containers the first time. We will design the optimum product size and packaging. Based on that, CAPE will allow you to create a shipping box and we can increase the number of boxes on a pallet and thereby increasing the number of pallets on a truck. It's as easy as inputting your data, running calculations, and then getting reports on the best possible configuration. KPAC also allows you to finish your pallets for distribution, as you can see on the left. KPAC comes with a case consolidation software on board where you can use any of, let's say, a limited amount of standard shipping containers that your company is using and based on the product it will pick the most optimal shipping container and kpac also has a very important dimension to evaluate your compression strength in order for your shipping containers to make it through the distribution to the final customer or retail location just mentioning uh, quickly here that KPAC also integrates with ESCO's Ardios CAD software. We won't talk about that today, but in another session, we can definitely explore that. KPAC can generate custom reports that you can print out and email, but we'll also see today that those reports can be uploaded into the cloud and you can invite your customer to look at those reports. So with CAPE, it's all about sustainability and return on investment. It comes in two different bundles, the essential bundle and the advanced bundle. The essential bundle allows you to uh, calculate single sizes and mixed products. Uh, it can also allow you to do order fulfillment and case fill. The advanced allows you also to create retail ready packaging design, starting from a known or an unknown uh, primary pack and then create a secondary and even a tertiary pack around it. As I mentioned, all that information can also be uploaded into the cloud. So let's switch on over to our CAPE software, which I have started up here in the background. The first thing you'll notice is that uh, when you install it, you can go into the resolution window and pick the proper resolution for you. So I'm gonna go with 1280 by 1024. You can move the uh, window across your desktop and rescale it, but notice that the empty space will just stay here on the right-hand side. Now we can see three program groups listed here. We have the arranged design group, we have the palette group, and we have the case fill group. Now this for me is a personal preference and you as a customer when you start uh, with the software can go ahead and rearrange these program groups on your screen for example here you can see that <clears throat> i want the arranged design group to be listed first then my palette group and then my case fill group so again that's a personal preference talking about preference the software also allows you to display the interface right here in a variety of languages. So using the program language, you can switch from English to French, German, Spanish, Swedish, and Italian. In the more settings, you have some more uh, granular uh, settings. But let's go ahead and start with the most basic, which is our palette group. So palette group allows you to take a primary object, in my case, a box, 
put that onto a palette by activating the yes or no toggle and then put that palette on a truck yes or no for now we're just going to take our primary and put that on a palette we hit the go button which will now fire up this specific little program within kpack and seconds later it presents me my input screen the main screen disappears in the background no worries you can always go back to that main screen by using the back button and while we're up here um, also notice that this is the place where you will go ahead and save and or calculate your um, cape uh, algorithms so notice also across the top here we have our box and our palette highlighted so the box uh, interface allows me here to pick from different styles of corrugated shippers here we can see I have picked a standard RFC the numbers uh, behind it the 224 refer to how many surfaces touch each other if you would take that box and unfold it in a flat um, uh, you know a flat orientation I can give my primary a name and most importantly we need to enter the dimensions of that primary so length width and height uh, right here in the input settings you can see that today we're working in inches and pounds but uh, if you're using this in Europe or other parts of the world you can easily switch here to millimeters and kilograms also notice that as I am entering information I can either specify internal dimensions or outside dimensions so outside dimensions obviously will take into account the thickness of the corrugate so <clears throat> let's go ahead and okay that this is good for now notice the little toggle right here to indicate the vertical dimensions of that case so in my example here I activated the 10 representing the height of the box um, the weight of the box so this is done here again in pounds but I can always right click in these fields and use a little conversion calculator that's built in so I can see that that would be 4.5 kilograms so even though I'm working in um, metric or imperial I can still switch between those so let's see my final box <clears throat> weighs uh, 10 pounds and the uh, net weight would be 8.9.875 the second tab right here is my palette so with that I can uh, see a list of different palettes that come standard with the software uh, 48 40 50 43 60 42 you can see a description behind these palettes so we decided to use a standard four-way 4840 these palettes can also <clears throat> be created with this small uh, palette builder and using the style directory you can see all the different palettes that uh, come with the software so with, again if there is a palette that you have that's not part of this you can create your own palette and add it to this list and obviously you're also going to want to hide some of these palettes if you don't use those on a day-to-day -day basis some of the palette uh, parameters are the maximum height that I allow to stack objects onto that palette and very important as well here is the maximum weight of that palette after entering those two uh, pieces of information I can now hit my calculate button right here the little calculator icon which now is going to give me different solutions okay so we can see here we are looking at the very first solution notice here at the bottom of the screen uh, you can see as well that we're looking at solution number one of 40 here I can also see my local time as well as my units of measure 
And using the buttons right here, I can scroll through these 40 solutions. As I scroll through these solutions, you can keep an eye here on a quick summary report that shows me the cube usage and the area usage. It also shows me how many primary uh, layers I have, four layers, how many per layer, and a total of 36 boxes per load. Just a quick FYI, typically the very first solution is the most efficient solution, but you might want to pick another solution based on the way the boxes are stacked on this palette. If you want to create a more detailed report, you can come into the solution report and here you can see visually uh, again the different solutions from 1 to 40. And um, you could also come in here and uh, export this current load as a PDF file. So if I would store this on my desktop and we'll call this demo you can see that the software generates a PDF, which gives me an overview of my palette group with all the parameters that um, I specified. These uh, reports can be customized. You have X amount of lines right here available for customization, and this can be emailed to your recipient or uh, internal uh, person in the company that might be loading these. Now, recently we also started to migrate the solution into the cloud. And this cloud is called the Cape Cloud. And that cloud allows you to upload these reports into that cloud and invite your customer to participate into that cloud. So after authenticating, I can, let's see, I can push this solution into that cloud and then visualize that. Um, you can see here that the software is coming up in Portuguese. Again, just like before, uh, on top uh, right here, you have the possibility to change that back into the language of your choice. And we can see here our solution that I just uploaded. Double clicking on this again brings me into a report builder where I can now see an interactive result of what that looks like. From here, again, I can save this as a PDF or I can share this report and invite somebody uh, to come to this cloud and look at this report. What's very nice is that uh, we can quickly switch here between units so I don't have to rerun my report. So just by switching, you can see all the dimensions are now in millimeters, centimeters, and kilograms. We can change the report language right here. And we can also change the load characteristics right here by picking a certain profile. So for example, here in the US, we have uh, a, a retail store, uh, Walmart and Costco. Um, Costco might have certain um, restrictions how they want to receive these. So you can see that by picking that load profile, we now automatically uh, prime our CAPE solution for that specific vendor. Now you can do also that right here in our uh, setup buttons and formatting that load here by adding straps, corner post, um, spreading the layers, uh, and so on and so on. But as I mentioned, we are slowly but surely moving that functionality into the cloud. Now I'd like to show you some of the interactive, interactive aspects of CAPE, and that is making changes and seeing what the impact is of those changes. So I mentioned that you can always go back to a previous screen using the back button. 
And for this example, I am going to go to my palette setup. And instead of allowing a 50 inch height stacking on my palette, I'm going to allow 72 inch height. I'm also going to allow one inch of overhang in the length and the width of that palette. And then simply by clicking back on my calculator, I can now see what the impact is of that change. So obviously by allowing a higher stacking, you can see that as where before I only had three layers. Now I have six layers for a total of 60 boxes per load. So it's that easy to make changes and then generate your final report. Going back two steps will bring me back to my main design. So in the first example, I showed you the palette group, which is a simple box shipper onto a palette. Let's explore a little more now the advanced feature called the arrange design group. This allows you to take a fixed or a variable primary design and create a shipper for that design and then palletize that shipper and place it onto a truck. So let's see what the input screen would look like for that arrange and design group. Firing up the interface will now show me not two tabs, but three tabs. My primary display, my secondary, my shipper, and my pallet, and then finally my truck. My primary pack right here, uh, again, you can pick from different seal uh, uh, types, whether that's a, a seal, a tray, um, as you can see here, um, these are my primary uh, objects and you can go ahead and also make new shapes right here. You can make new cases, which are typically um, rectangular, um, or square in volume, trays, cylinders, bags, uh, oval shapes, blister packs, and so on. This is also the place where you create new trucks and containers, as well as new pallet bases. Okay, so this is a, a standard of a folding carton RSC, uh, the top talk second, where we enter our primary dimension. So this is a small. A rectangular box think of a perfume or toothpaste uh, container six inch by five inch by eight inch we can also allow a uh, bulge so bulge is a parameter that uh, gives you a little more um, extra room around that primary design because in reality uh, these little boxes will not really be squeezed so they have uh, a little bit of play and that play that uh, you can enter here. So that typically is, is a very small value, like one millimeter, uh, let's say, or a quarter or three quarter uh, inch. Um, my net weight, my gross weight is, uh, let's say uh, one um, pound. Uh, my net weight, let's say is 0.97. Um, my case, my secondary shipper, um, is determined by two parameters. We have our minimum and maximum quantity. So here I am specifying that I want anywhere between one dozen and two dozen of primary objects in my shipper. Okay, so I don't really care um, anything between 12 and 24. Now, if you have very specific um, shipping uh, parameters, you can say, okay, I want to pack 12, exactly 12 units in this shipper. Then you simply make the minimum and maximum value the same. Okay. In this case, I'm going to allow that uh, quantity to vary. The maximum case weight, however, cannot exceed 50 pounds. Very important as well are limitations that you can place 
on that shipping container. So here you can see that I am capping my maximum outside dimension of my shipping container to 20 by 20 by 20. So this will allow the uh, FedEx, UPS or DHL guy or the person in the warehouse uh, to be able to manage these boxes and uh, have a manageable size of that box. Uh, so anything over 20 inch will be capped and all my results will be underneath uh, lower than or equal to 20 inch. Okay, I'm very curious. Without further ado, let's hit that uh, calculate button. And I can see that the software told me that I cannot right here specify uh, my uh, solution because the maximum load height is larger than my truck height. Okay, let's go explore that for a second. Well, that makes sense because I see that I have selected a very small standard 20 foot truck right here. And the height of that truck is 102 inches. So what I can do is I can say, okay, I made a mistake. Uh, I am going to pick my uh, reefer high cube right here, um, 40 foot. And again, uh, see here based on that uh, total height and the case and the carton, I can hit that calculate button again. So we can see that my primary is stacked up to 38 uh, inch. We can see here the primary so this is my five by uh, six by eight inch primary. This is my secondary, this is my shipper. So I can actually right click on this and lift the cover off to reveal that I have two, four, six times two, 12 boxes per load. And I have a total of two layers, nine boxes per layer for a total of 18, 18 times 12 is two, 116 per pallet. This uh, again here um, uh, in these uh, setup buttons, you can see the uh, solution here in different uh, ways, different fashions. So uh, with that, you can say, show me uh, a top view, show me uh, a twin top view, show me a break uh, load and draw that so you can see the different layers uh, like so. Um, you can, um, you know, place a second uh, pallet on the top to protect the load. Um, so different ways to visualize your uh, final uh, result in different uh, views as well. So I'm gonna remove that uh, base cap and then go back to my corner view. Okay, uh, so again, remember also that this is uh, one of three solutions. This will be my second solution. This will be my third solution. And then within each of these solutions, you can also go to different patterns using the up and down button right there. So this gives you the freedom to explore the different uh, solutions. And keep in mind, the first solution is typically the best solution. Now I'm curious to see my truck. So you can go to the truck menu and ask to show the truck. So this uh, allowed uh, two pallets to be stacked on top of one another. This is one of the parameters specified uh, for the truck. So I can see here the efficiency of the storage right there. If you're really focused on uh, trucks, uh, I would invite you on Thursday to explore Truck Fill with me, which is a dedicated program that offers you much more uh, granular parameters as far as a truck is concerned. Okay. Now, um, going back uh, to my primary, I can again show you how important the input settings are for the case. So let's go to the case settings. And here, for example, I can show you that if I would allow the height of the secondary to go up to 25 inches, 
um, I can see my primary here is eight. So currently I have two layers that would be 16. So hopefully this will allow me to stack three layers high on my primary. Um, we can see if I lift this cover um, again, it now uh, kept it still as uh, two. As you experiment with this, also keep in mind that you can allow to rotate these boxes on the palette in the length or width direction, depending on the object in here. If it's a fragile object, obviously you want to maintain the you know, store this site up, which would cap you right there. But if that's not the case, allowing that box to rotate can give you uh, more freedom. And then uh, hitting that calculate button again, you can see now that uh, by doing so, um, I now have four layers. Um, they are rotated in a different uh, orientation, as you can see. And again, this can allow you to uh, go ahead and explore different uh, solutions. Once you're done, simply upload it into the cloud and you can invite your customer to participate and look at these solutions. That same arranged design group allows you to vary that uh, primary as well. And that is a great option where you have the possibility to change the dimensions of the primary display, the primary object. So let's say that you have the capability to change that primary display. That's not always the case. You can specify here your dimension variance in plus or minus. Uh, so that means that my primary should be six inches in length, but it also could be five or it could be seven, All right? So this is plus or minus one. And I'm going to do that in increments of an eighth of an inch, or let's say a quarter of an inch. That is going to determine how many solutions uh, the software is going to uh, give me. So the increments, all right? So my final package could be 6.25 inch um, or in millimeters, let's say you vary by five millimeters, right? 120, 125, 115 millimeters, um, whatever uh, you uh, decide there. So as I vary those uh, primary dimensions, again, my secondary, I can also let that vary between one and two dozen and cap my case settings right here to 20 inches. And then calculating that, you're going to see now that the software will take a little bit longer to calculate because I give it more parameters, more variability to find that best, most optimal primary pack, secondary pack, and then going onto that palette. Again, keep in mind, this is not for everybody. This is for companies that are willing to go back in their design life cycle look at their product and say, okay, let's go ahead and see what happens if I would vary uh, my uh, primary. And a great example of that is uh, what Apple did with their new iPhone 12, where you know they changed the height of the box from 1.875 uh, inches to one and a quarter inch. Um, they were able to do that because they uh, no longer include the uh, charging brick in the cable or the headphones, I can't remember. Uh, but the impact of changing that primary uh, on the final uh, estimate uh, of 200 million SKUs from last year, uh, that is just, you know, tremendous savings uh, that Apple uh, will be able to accomplish this year. Uh, you can see here that uh, just one truck uh, difference right here on, uh, on one load uh, speaks for itself. Okay, so let's go back to our uh, solution here. Uh, let's switch back. We can see it's still um, calculating. Let's go ahead and stop the calculation for now and see if we go back. We can see our primary and uh, notice here that uh, my primary is five by five by nine. So it did decide to uh, increase the dimension 
and decrease it in this height. And then again, this is my uh, secondary, right? So primary and secondary. Uh, and again, we can go back and uh, see that uh, solution and uh, experiment with that. Last but not least, before we open it up here to um, Q&A, is one more thing I'd like to quickly cover is Caseful Group. So Caseful Group allows you just like your uh, primary palette group, you don't have to work with boxes. Uh, let's say your primary is, uh, you know, cylindric uh, shapes, uh, car parts, um, strollers, um, you know, uh, baby strollers, whatever product it is, you can create um, a shape for that. This, however, will case fill will limit the total choice to a list of existing box sizes. So I see a lot of companies doing this. Um, they have fill restrictions where um, you see here total records in my database. That database can be queried here, by the way, um, open database, database utility. So this database here in my case has 20 primary shipping containers. So these are, you know, basic brown boxes. But my company decided to, you know, define these 20 standards. And as I calculate, I am only going to take these standards into account. Obviously, you can add, delete, uh, and edit uh, these. So if we go back, I can then say, I want to consider all 20. I want to consider uh, 10 records and I can say consider record number one, three and five and so on or um, a record block. So between uh, one and five. So the first five uh, boxes in my uh, database. In my case, I'm going to allow all records to be explored, calculate and based on my bag, I can see now that case number two would be the most optimal choice to ship these bags right here. Um, much more to explore like partition types. So typically I would want uh, to have a partition type uh, right there for that bag to make sure that they are protected during shipping. But uh, here you can see that uh, all that is possible. Much more to explore in upcoming um, demonstrations where we'll take a deeper dive into each of these little components. But for now, uh, we are going to stop the recording and open it up for the next half hour